now that I'm on the road, uh, let me uh, clarify what this trip is all about. Uh, as you can see in the background, none of my kids are here, my wife's not here, this is a, uh, an alone trip for me. Um, I'm going up to Idaho where my brother lives and I'm going to be helping him with a home project. And that's why I have all the tools in the back. We're removing a large boiler that was in his home that was being used in the past for radiant floor heating, for heating the water. And he's replacing that with a more modern unit and, and this tank is getting rusted out, etc. So it's going to be a fairly big project, so I thought I'd go help him out. And uh, so that's, that's the whole purpose of this trip. If I had a truck, then going on a trip like this, I would have probably brought a ladder and potentially some other larger tools that I have. Um, but being this car what it is, I'm still able to bring pretty much everything that I really needed to to uh, help my brother with what he's doing because he has ladders and other things like that. Since my brother is working on doing this project and various other projects and he's preparing to, to sell the home, they have the home cleaned up and I don't necessarily want to be too much of an imposition and so I'm actually planning on sleeping tonight in my Tesla because I've done it before, it works quite well and it's going to be less effort all around. I'm loading up the car with all of the stuff that I'm taking. I have a carpet cleaner there, a couple of crowbars and hammers. Here in the trunk area I have just all the miscellaneous smaller tools and I kind of wrapped the metal ones in, in a towel just so they, they don't clatter as I drive. And the carpet cleaner fits just perfectly right there. And then I folded down this third of the rear seats so that I could fit in this long six foot crowbar. And I've also added in some bedding for uh, when I'm going to be camping out overnight in the car. So I've got my pillow here and some blankets here. And then I've also thrown in this Coleman air mattress here uh, with the pump. So I'll show you how that goes camping in the car by myself. I'm on the road. The battery is at 95% right now. It was at 97% when I left the house. Right now it's estimating that I'll arrive with 5% when we get to Pocatello, Idaho. And I don't know that I will do that. We'll see. I'll just keep going and, and see what our energy consumption looks like. But there's a charger up here in Tree Mountain, kind of by Logan there on the map. So about halfway. So I'll potentially stop there if I need to. I keep getting that message saying stay below 80 miles per hour in order to reach your destination. So I may end up stopping in Tree Mountain. I'm not entirely sure yet, to be honest. It still shows 5% arriving at Pocatello. And you can see my... Uh, projected range right now at the current power consumption is 174 miles. That's what it shows right over here. And we've got 147 miles to go to, to get to Pocatello. So, and if I need to slow down, I always can. So it's kind of a balance between stopping and being able to go faster, but that takes up time. So at this point, I think I'm gonna just charge on to Pocatello because it's looking like it will probably make it just fine. I decided to go ahead and stop at the uh, Tremont Supercharger. You can see it's saying 30 more miles and that we will arrive there with 47% battery. So we're really not going to need to charge terribly long. Uh, the reason why I decided to stop though is actually just to uh, change the battery of the GoPro on the roof of the car. I think it will probably be getting low by that point. And uh, so uh, I'll just top up the um, battery here on the Tesla just a little bit to give me plenty of buffer. Uh, the speed limit increased along this section as well so i don't want to be going as slow and uh, the gopro on the roof needs a new battery so i decided to stop for those reasons i probably i, I know i could have gotten to the pocatello supercharger just fine if i had um, maybe you know, gone a little bit slower like had to stay you know 80 to 78 miles per hour but not a big deal we are just arriving at the tree mountain supercharger here in a hotel parking lot and it just rained a bit I've plugged into the supercharger and it got up to 61 kilowatts and then has gone uh, down and now it's, it's kind of marching down. Uh, looking up here, I've routed myself to near my destination. It's having me stopping in Pocatello at the supercharger there for 30 minutes and then um, it'll have me getting to St. Anthony at 19% uh, if I'm there for half an hour. Uh, I am actually not going to do that though um, based on uh, what I know about my trip and what I'm wanting to do. Um, I'm routing to a different supercharger up here in Idaho Falls. So if I route myself to Idaho Falls, let's see how uh, long we potentially would need to charge in order to bypass Poc uh, Pocatello. All right, so it's estimating that we would charge here in Tremont for 25 minutes and then would be able to get to Idaho Falls. And so I could wait until I get here to a positive 10% and then I'd be able to skip this Pocatello supercharger and just go here to Idaho Falls. However, I actually intend to stop at both of them. 
as I've talked about in prior videos, it's more effective to charge at more superchargers and keep the battery at the lower end of the percentage. So I actually will stop here in Pocatello and then I'll be stopping in Idaho Falls as well. And then St. Anthony is right here and that's my destination. So these are potentially closer together than they really need to be. And I don't know, I, I think I'm just stopping at them partially because I've never actually stopped at any of these superchargers past Tree Mountain. And so I'm just kind of exploring as well. Uh, to see what these different superchargers look like. Time got away from me just a little bit. I overcharged. We're going to be arriving in Pocatello at 19% now. So let's get on the road. Uh, oh, and it's been raining quite a bit the whole time I've been here. So that will affect the range potentially. So I guess it doesn't hurt to overcharge a little bit. We're just approaching Pocatello, Idaho now. We have about two miles until we're going to exit. Now this right here shows the estimated arrival percentage of 13% and our consumption over the last 30 miles has been an average of 380 watt hours per mile. To give you an idea of what that train looks like, you can see uh, how wavy this graph is. We've been going through some minor uh, mountainous terrain, so it definitely comes and goes, the, the power efficiency. We've arrived at the Pocatello Supercharger. There was one other car here charging, but they are just departing. And you can see here, this is a eight stall supercharger right off the freeway. It's in the back parking lot of this Clarion Inn. So looking at the charge, we're at 120 kilowatts is what it just got to. And it's already descending from there. It's estimating an hour and 10 minutes to get to a full charge, but that's actually not uh, what we're going to be doing. What we're doing is going up here to the supercharger up the road in Idaho Falls. And so it is estimating that we need to be here for 15 minutes of charging to be able to get to Idaho Falls. So I'm going to take care of some organization of my pictures and my cameras, and then we'll get back on the road here after 15 minutes. One reason my energy consumption was a little on the high side coming here is the headwind I was getting coming from the uh, north to the south, uh, southeast a little bit. Uh, you can see it's six miles per hour right now in Tree Mountain come, continuing up the uh, I-15 route I was on. It was um, around seven at times, and then here I'm in Pocatello, it's a six. The battery is now charged up to 48%, and uh, it is estimating that we'll arrive in Idaho Falls at 23%. I took a little bit longer doing everything I'm trying to do, and the car is already ready to go, so I'm going to get started. I am just arriving at the supercharger at 24%, and this is the Idaho Falls supercharger. And that's where the stalls are. It's my first time ever being here. Let's get plugged in. It's an eight stall supercharger and it's in the parking lot back here of this kind of, there's malls, there's shops and stuff, but I haven't really looked around. So it's a nice uh, safe area, but it's also not a lot of restroom options per se, depending on if they're open or not. We're plugged in. The supercharger peaked at 93 kilowatts briefly and is already down to 87 kilowatts. So right here is Idaho Falls where we are now and we're gonna be going up I-15 here to St. Anthony. I'm routed to a place kind of close to where I'm going and it's estimating that we'd arrive there with 7%. So technically right now we could just continue on our way and just get there. However, because I've never been to my brother's house before in this Tesla, I'm a little bit unsure of the charging situation and whether or not I'll be able to charge at his house. I'm pretty sure I will be able to, um, but I'm going to just out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to charge enough here at this Idaho Falls supercharger to be able to go round trip to my brother's house and then back here tomorrow. Okay, I'm ready to take off. I just wanted to show you briefly kind of uh, how I decided that I had enough energy. If you look here at the car, it shows that it has 135 rated miles to go. As you know from my past videos, the actual range you get out of a uh, Tesla is not the rated miles when you're at freeway speed. So it's usually about 80% efficient. Judging by the route and how many miles it is to where I'm going, you can see it is estimating that we'll get there with 35%, but most importantly, I'm looking here and it says 40 miles. To get there so round trip it'll be 80 miles and then when you add in that lower efficiency it'll probably take say 100 miles of range and so coming back here to the charge screen we have 137 miles of range so we have uh, quite a bit of buffer there that's um, probably close to 20 to 25 percent buffer i'm going to go ahead and get on the road we're uh, approaching our destination here i'm about five minutes out of st anthony idaho if you look here on the screen 
that's where it is and that will be arriving it looks like with 37 percent battery to be clear i didn't need to stop at all the superchargers but i was curious to see all of them and this was a good time being alone and not having to inconvenience my wife and kids in summary the first drive was one hour and 13 minutes then i stopped in tremont to charge for 13 minutes I then drove to Pocatello for 1 hour and 7 minutes. Then I charged there for 20 minutes. Driving to Idaho Falls took 36 minutes. I charged there for 21 minutes. I then drove on to my destination in St. Anthony, which took 37 minutes. Summarizing the entire day, I used 148% of the battery, which was 287 miles, but I used 378 rated miles. That's an overall driving efficiency of 76%. I used 113 kilowatt hours and got 396 watt hours per mile. The average temperature was 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking up the logs on my Tesla account shows me that at the time, electricity was 25 or 26 cents per kilowatt hour. Over the entire day without free supercharging, I would have paid $20.66. Upon arriving there, I figured out that I could plug in my car, so I got the extension cord run and car plugged in. Then I blew up my air mattress and set up my bed before hanging out with family for the rest of the evening. I am setting up the air mattress now. This is it right there, and I'll get that blown up in just a second. But first I wanted to point out here um, the, the situation in a Tesla Model S is that when you have these front seat, uh, these I guess they're the, the rear seats folded down, there is a small ridge right there. That's not ideal, obviously, for sleeping to have <laughs> a jump up right there. And then additionally, I don't bother to bring this floor cover for the rear facing seats when they're folded into the floor and so there is an additional little drop off right there so if you look back there's kind of this steer, stair step uh, three levels there but that's not a big deal uh, with the air mattress when I blow it up all the way it's thick enough that it's slanted for sure downward towards the back but I don't when I'm sleeping I don't feel these drop offs at all but it's just something to be cognizant of if you were going to try to just like sleep on some thin foam pad then these drop-offs would be potentially a problem and so I'll get the air mattress blown up here and you'll see how well that fits here in the back so there's the air mattress filled up you can see here from the front how it looks it's it's a little bit, little bit on the slanted side you'll notice here too how much space there is in front of it and also that the mattress isn't supported the the, the seat back ends there and then the mattress there so I mean if, if you were really tall and you needed to you potentially need to have some support up here whether it be a bin a storage bin here or a piece of wood or something that that supports their mattress but for me this works just fine and then I've put both the front seats all the way forward I lean forward and slid forward all the way so this gives you an idea of how close they all get to the steering wheel and that just makes this rear area very open and spacious what I typically do though is I sometimes need to come into the front of the car to do something and so I go ahead and put this seat back just like this and so I can still get in the driver's seat and do stuff in the front of the car when I'm not laying on the bed. But the passenger side, I go ahead and just leave all the way forward like that all night long. All right, so now that I've got my bed set up, I just wanted to show you the charging situation that I have found that we could use. So looking here at the car, you can see it's currently charging at 24 amps. Uh, the cord comes along the ground here. And this is where the uh, Tesla EVSE is. And I have that plugged into my... Uh, 30 foot extension cord that's rated for 40 amp continuous charging and that is going here into a window that's on the side here of the house into a, a greenhouse here now i'll show you the inside and i'm now in the house we have the cord coming in this window so the window has to stay open about an inch or so and then the cord comes around over this way and this is their dryer and so we have it plugged into the wall that their dryer normally uses and this is on a 30 amp circuit, so I know to charge the car at 24 amps, which is 80% of that capacity. This is their electrical panel. And looking right here, it says laundry dryer is on circuits 13 and 15. So coming over here to this side, we have 13 and 15 
right here. So we can see there that it's a 30 amp breaker. So if you plug into a, an outlet in anyone's home, it's always uh, a safe thing. It's something you should do is go check their electrical panel, uh, double check the circuit you're plugging into and what the amperage rating is of that circuit and then go to 80% of that. It's now the next morning. I slept just fine. I kept the, the cabin temperature, a temperature around average of 75 degrees all night. This is the first time I've ever camped out in the car while it was plugged in and it was able to charge up to 90 percent while I was also you know keeping the HVAC system on all night. In this case it was the heater that was being used because it was cold outside. I didn't really pay attention to what the temperature was um, but uh, I'll, I'll look that up after this. Uh, but anyway I slept fine in here. It's a totally comfortable way to sleep. Uh, you can see here that it consumed 41 kilowatt hours to get charged up and that was from about I think it was 35 percent or around there up to 90 percent for our project first we cut around the perimeter and then we were able Yay! to push out the wall then we hooked up the chain to the big tank and i wanted to test the torque of my tesla so i went ahead and took off the nose cone and hooked up the chain to that and was able to successfully pull out the tank with the tesla there was not very much clearance between the stovepipe and the top of the roof so i had to be careful there at the end to make sure we didn't break the stovepipe off but it ended up fitting underneath so i was able to pull the tank out the rest of the way in the off chance the chain popped off the tank i went ahead and tied a cinder block to it so that it would uh, hold the chain back if it popped off and wouldn't hit the car i took off the nose cone of the Tesla here and it does have these two uh, sensor uh, connectors right here one here and one over there and then I screwed in the toe point on the Tesla put the chain on it here and then that chain comes over here to the corner of the uh, tank right here to get out the uh, toe point you have to pull up the lining of your frunk and it's right here you just pull it out all right mission accomplished at my brother's house we managed to get that big boiler out of his house and as you saw the Tesla performed admirably um, so uh, I'm on my way home now and I wanted to show you what the routing looks like on the way up I stopped at Idaho Falls to charge and Pocatello on the way back I'm leaving now um, I am at 82% uh, battery and so it's saying that I need to stop in Pocatello for 15 minutes and I'll get there at 43% battery and then I'll stop in Tremont for 25 minutes and then I'll get home. Uh, this is not home of course. I don't live at Costco, that's just near my house. So in any case, I'm not going to stop at every supercharger on the way, on the way back because there's others I could stop at but uh, that's unnecessary. I'm pulling up here to the Pocatello superchargers. We're arriving with 38% battery. The supercharger uh, peaked at 76 kilowatts and is now down to 74. We're at 38% battery and we have 20 minutes to go before we'll get back on our way and then we'll head on to Tremont, Utah. It shows that we're going to be arriving in the Tremont supercharger here at 15%. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug and go. The car says five minutes. They're, they tend to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, I often plug, unplug at 10. So let's go ahead and get, get unplugged. We'll get on the road. You can see the freeway's right there, so this supercharger is not hard to get to. All right, I'm pulling into the Tremont supercharger. As you can see, those are the stalls right there, and I'm arriving at 9% battery. Um, I kind of did a demonstration on this trip where I was going somewhat fast, and I was definitely going through some mountain ranges, and so I was showing a little bit worst case scenario uh, power consumption and low efficiency if you just go through mountains and uh, drive fast. So I'll show you in Testify what that ends up looking like in the real world with the data uh, when you do that. All right, I'm plugged in. It got up to 126 kilowatts. So that's good. That's nice and fast. It's still estimating half an hour of charging, which is funny because it was going to arrive previously at 15% and was going to require half an hour. So we're up to 10% and I'll show you when we get back on the road. The car is showing that we're at 61%. It's estimating five more minutes to depart, but it's also estimating that we will arrive with 13% battery, which is good enough in my book. So I'm gonna go ahead and get us unplugged. In summary, on the way home, the first drive was one hour and nine minutes.
The Pocatello Supercharger added 38% over 16 minutes. The drive to Tremonton took 1 hour and 8 minutes. Charging at Tremonton added 52% over 31 minutes. I then drove 1 hour and 24 minutes to get all the way home, which took 51% of the battery. In summary, for the entire day, 152% of the battery was consumed to drive 297 miles, but 393 rated miles were used with a driving efficiency of 75.6%. I used 119.64 kilowatt hours, getting 402 watt hours per mile. The cost for the day would have been $10.66 at superchargers if I didn't have free supercharging. Round trip was 584 miles total and the supercharging would have cost $31.32 and the cost of charging at the homes at either end was $9.88 at $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour. I've arrived home. It was a little bit of a long drive there at the end especially because it's uh, midnight as I'm getting home and it's dark and uh, a couple hours of driving in the dark but in any case I made it. Looking here, I got back home with 10% on the battery. 